guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So, today we're going to do a little experiment. Um, also, part of the reason why I prefer pedal board processors over having a gazillion pedals, other than, of course, lack of space. But if I had the space, I would still have a pedal board processor. But why? Well, it's because you can take multiple effects and make patches for a specific song and then just name that patch the name of the song. So you can just go boom, 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 boom on stage and not have to worry about doing, you know, some kind of a weird ritual dance to hit your pedals where you need them and stuff for each song that you're going to do, right? Makes kind of perfect sense, right? How patches made. Um, the idea behind Katana amps, of course, we have the Katana 100 watt 1x12 Mark II series here. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful amp, by the way. If you haven't bought one, get one. If you got a Mark I, buy a Mark II, ditch the Mark I. The Mark II is way better. Uh, anyways, we have a Roland Cube 40 XL amp as well. And uh, with the Katana, we're going through the back end of the amp, through the power amp in section, or preamp section, or pedal board effects section, whatever you want to call that circuit. And what happens is when you plug into that with your pedal board, okay, being a processor unit like mine, or independent pedals, you're bypassing the onboard preamp completely. All you get access to is master volume only and your power soaker circuit that takes you from 100 watts to 50 to half a watt to standby, right? So, nothing. Um, now, the, the Cube doesn't have that availability, and most amps in the market don't. So very few amps actually have the capability of the Katana for this kind of purpose. And, um, you know, some people would be like, well, I'd rather you're go in the front of the amp. Well, yeah, when you go in the front of the amp, you get that amp's voicing of its preamp into the amplifier circuit and blah, blah, blah. Correct. Absolutely. Now, you also have modeling effects in processor boards. All right. Something you're not going to have in separate pedals, obviously. So you can pick and you can say, okay, I want a Mesa Boogie amp or I want a, a Marshall whatever series, okay, or a Behringer or blah, blah, blah. And you add that preamp with your patch because you want to emulate that amp. You are not emulating that amp. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. You're not actually emulating that amp whenever you go to the front end of an amplifier, okay. Uh, at least not in the case of a guitar amp. All right, because you have its own circuit here. And you've got bass mid treble control, you've got whatever other effects are on here, if any. And the Katana would be the same way. You would be going through the front end of the amp, getting access to its whole pile of different features. Okay. Um, now, the advantage, of course, of going through the front end of the amp is you have independent control of your EQ. Going through the back end of the amp on the katana in that circuit area, you lose access to your EQ. Now, you can hook pedal boards into boatloads of different amps um, through the send and returns, in which case you're getting all your onboard stuff on your amp, plus you're getting your pedals or pedal board on top of that. You're getting full control over your entire amp and all its features, and that's great. And if you can create the patches you want to sound exactly the way you want them to be, or hope that they could become with your guitar, of course, um, then that's awesome, okay? But if you want to create something completely different, um, you won't be able to do what we're about to do unless you can go through the back end, in this case, the Katana amp, and bypass that preamp completely, all right? But there is a noticeable sound difference turning uh, the patch preamps on and off and leaving just their effects. So the first one we're going to do is what I call a clean stack. Now this is just a preamp, um, and it has reverb, of course, uh, because I'm generally going to be using my Katana amp, so I have no access to its reverb anymore, because I'm through the back end, right? But we do have reverb effect here, but it's shut off. Same as any other effects are shut off. The EQ is uh, bass, mid, and treble are all at 12. An amplifier circuit without a preamp the sound is balanced basically right in the middle, okay? Um, generally, that's the idea, okay? So you have the natural sound going on. And I generally, even on a normal day, never use the EQ uh, in the amplifiers. I always leave them all at 12 o'clock. So, you know, I just worry about my volume control and whatever else I want out of them. So, 
let's start out with the cube. Now I've balanced out the volume as close as I can to being identical between both amps. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of sound. Now I am recording this with a camcorder as well. It's the only way I could pull this video off. Uh, so if you don't like the sound quality, so sorry, that's the way it goes. But you are going to be getting the sound of these amps in my room and with my acoustics. And um, it's not going to be exact, of course, you know, compression and all. So wear headphones. It actually makes a huge difference. Um, anyway, so let's, let's put the amps on. Now, the Katana, I'm going to run it only in the 50 watt mode, so that it pretty much balances out um, as far as total tonality and all that uh, to the cube at a 40 watt level. It's the best I can do. So, this is both amps at once. in stereo. Um, Alright, let's turn off the preamp and still leave both amps on. So you notice the sound thins right out and you get a huge decrease in output. It's because all we're working with is a reverb circuit and whatever my foot volume control is set at, which is actually about half. So I'm only pushing half of that amount of circuit into the amps, right? So my solution is floor it or turn the volumes up here to bring that sound back up much higher again. But we're leaving that alone for anything we're doing clean here. So let's hear what the difference is here. Now, with just the preamp turned on, so just my main patch, uh, actually I should turn that on and turn on standby. Uh, so this is just the cube with its own preamp with a natural clean preamp. So we have two preamps now pushing at the amplifier circuit and this is what we're going to get. Now with the Cube40XL, if you know anything about it, its main clean channel amplifier circuit is based on the JC Clean, okay? So let's turn that preamp off. So can I improve that? Well, I'm at 8.30, so let's bring that up to about 10 o'clock. done that. We'll turn this off and we'll put that on the 50 watt. Now this is with the natural clean amp. I don't know what amp they're trying to emulate with natural clean. inch speaker, bigger cab, should be actually better. Um, of course, the cube, no matter what we do, we have a preamp in effect. We've basically gone from turning off the natural clean and now we're on the cube by itself with just a onboard reverb from the patch. <laughs> it's kind of strange, isn't it, right, when you think about things. Going through the back end of an amp, you have no preamp control. 
So this next one is called uh, Power uh, Riff. Power Metal Riff. I'm going to have to turn the volume down a little bit. preamps to get this sound. All right. They've also put an EQ in here, two noise suppressors, uh, and a reverb circuit as well. So you've got all that creating this sound. So we actually have three preamps in effect now. We have the two from the patch that make that sound, okay? And then, of course, we have our own preamp in the front end of the amp here. So here's what that patch sounds like, just going from its own two preamps and all the other gizmos straight into the back of the katana without preamp access to the katana other than just a master volume and the soaker circuit. So now we have to raise the volume to bring that up. This is what's going to happen. So now we have a reverb, two noise suppressors, and an EQ. Okay, let's just turn the Roland on. Now remember, the Roland has its own preamp because we're in the front end of the amp. Katana up around the 10 o'clock position, 10.30ish, about 10.30 actually, uh, to the Roland at the halfway mark, because we have no preamp whatsoever going into the Katana, right? We're just using the amp, and we're just using those effects, that's it, okay? So, let's make one more little change and see what happens. So I'm going to go to another a patch I don't care about, and I'm going to clear all of its parameters out. Now I want just an overdrive, and I like the rat distortion, and it has a natural clean uh, amp, but we're turning that off. So all we get is just the rat pedal and a noise suppressor. And, of course, we have no preamping voicing going to the katana, but, of course, we do have the cubes built in, and we're going to turn the volume down a bit. So that's our cube. JC Clean is the preamp. Right? So, let's go over to the katana.
name the patch and see it on screen because there's no screen on the Katana app, obviously. But you can write down your own cheat sheets and stuff. But um, I do actually prefer the processor boards. They're more compact, lightweight, uh, cost-effective. Um, this board that I'm using is a GT100, and it sells for about 650 new last time I checked the price on it. Um, I didn't pay anywhere near that. I got a better deal because, you know, it's been rented a few times, so Long McQuaid gave me a good deal. Uh, the GT1000, though, is the superior board to, I think, anything out there right now. Um, just my opinion. Everybody has their own, so hey, don't be barking at me. We all have our own preferences in life. Um, and I've had the GT1000, and it was just too much of an overkill board for me, uh, for my purposes. Even this one is kind of overkill, um, but I think of it this way. I saved um, literally about $800 plus, actually more than that, five. Eight, yeah, I saved about $900 in the taxes on $900 by going to the GT100. So that was a huge savings, you know, and I only saved that much because I bought it as a used board. As a new board, I actually saved closer to about $700 in taxes if I would have bought the GT100 brand spanking new. Um, you know, so, I mean, there is a savings there, and I still get all the effects I will personally ever need. There are effects in the 1000 and other capabilities in that board that are not available, of course, in the 100, but it's kind of like pick and choose your battles of what you need, right? So we all want one, but it's kind of like I'm starting to settle down and go, what do I really need, right? Because uh, I want it all, like <laughs> a lot of you guys. So I think that in the end result, if you're going to use preamps with your processor board, um, Go through the back end if you have an amplifier where you can bypass its onboard preamp, or feel free to go through the front end. It just depends on the kind of sound and tone you're after, because even going from front to back, there's such a huge difference in that sound, and you know, turning the, the preamp on the, on the patch on and off to whichever way you're doing things really alters things as well. So it opens you up to a much wider variety of sounds and tones available to you as opposed to just doing things the old school way and just going, oh, okay, I got this and this has got this. Um, and it's like really hard to dial in stuff. And guys do have a lot of hard times dealing, uh, dialing in stuff, never mind with independent pedals, but they have a hard time dialing it in just with a processor board because you're dealing with multiple preamps above board, like that, that distortion effect that we did, that riff, middle riff. That took two amp preamps just to create that sound along with the other stuff. You take out those two preamps, you're yanked. You're going to now have to add distortion on this. Is that sound going to be the same? Not even close. And if you have a third preamp involved, which you would going through the front end of the amp, now you've got another completely different tone that you might not want to have there. And you can't stop that unless you have an amplifier where you can bypass the onboard preamp like the Katana Mark IIs do. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching guys. I hope you got a lot out of this and you learned a lot. Um, if there's other videos that you want to see me do music related, just let me know and uh, certainly if I can do it, I will do it. If I can't, well, hey, guess what? Ain't gonna happen. Anyways, in the meantime, catch you later. See ya.